Hello and welcome to Geospatial Analysis with Python. So in this session, we'll be generating a land cover map for India and the tool that we'll be using is Jupyter Notebook. So let's jump into a Jupyter Notebook and let's get started. So here we are into a Jupyter Notebook. So let's first start by importing the libraries. So I'll import EE, that is the Earth Engine. I'll run it and I'll then import GWE map. These two libraries are sufficient in order to generate the land cover map for India. Let's move forward and create a map. So I'll just make a variable, usual variable that is use we have map and I'll just pass GE map dot map function and I'll just write map here in order to generate a map over here. So that's it. We have successfully generated the map. We can just drag it to zoom it. Similar to your Google Maps. Let's move forward and just put a center to it so that we do not need to drag and drop every time. So I'll just create map dot set center and I'll just pass a latitude and longitude to it. So let's pass 78 over 28 and I'll just pass a zoom level to it. So let's say 4 and I'll just terminate the line using a semicolon and I'll just hit the run button. So you can see map has already shifted itself and you can see a good nice view of Indian terrain over here. Let's move forward and let's create the data. So I'll just make a variable data. Now where does this data come from? Again the same answer, we'll go to the Google Earth Engine. I'll just go to my browser and type there Earth Engine datasets. I'll just write Earth Engine datasets. That's it. We are good to go. So I'll go to developers.google.com Earth Engine dataset. That's it. We have landed on a page Earth Engine data log. So let's view all the datasets and then decide what particular dataset will help us to create a land cover map for India. Let's go to view all datasets. Here we are, landed on a page where we can see all the data collections over here. So, for in order to generate a land cover map, we'll require a Copernicus data. So, I'll just type here Copernicus. You don't need to even type complete name, you can just type copper and you can find out Copernicus global land cover layers over here. Just click this particular dataset that we'll be using and you will land it on a page Copernicus global land cover layers. The availability of dataset is from 2015 to 2019 and the dataset provider is Copernicus. Then we have Earth Engine snippet over here. You can just copy this line and you can just copy it. Now we will jump back to our Jupyter Notebook and I'll just paste it over here into our data variable that we have created already and I'll terminate the line in the semicolon. But we do not require image collection. We'll just pass an image variable to it. So I'll just pass image and I'll hit the run button. That's it. We have successfully imported the data into our Jupyter Notebook. But this data contains a lot more information than we require. So I'll just jump back to my data set and I'll just go to the band section. We have some description section over here and we have band section. We have image properties, terms of use, citations, POI. You can just check it out and we'll make use of discrete classification band and I'll just copy this and I'll just jump back to my Jupyter Notebook and I'll make use of dot select function and I'll pass my copied discrete classification over here. Now I have already terminated it. So let's hit the run button over here. So we have successfully imported the data and we have selected the discrete classification from our data set. But this data contains the information about whole the earth, but we'll require it for the India region. So what we'll do, we'll create a shape file of India. So let's make a variable shape. That's it. So there are particular ways in order to import a shape file into Jupyter Notebook. So I'll just comment it over here. You can make use of very popular GeoPandas. We can make use of Fiona library. That is also very famous. Then again, you can make use of by shape. So you have various ways in order to import your shape file into your Jupyter notebook. But I'll make you, since I have already imported the Earth Engine library, so I'll make use of Earth Engine library. You can make use of any other library because the main function that we require here is a shape file. 
so the method of importing shape file is of not much importance so i'll make use of a function ev dot feature collection and i'm good to go that's it uh, so i'll just pass my path to the shape file so you can find this path in the description section if you want to use the same shape file and you can use the same function in order to import the shape file you do not require to install geopandas or feona or iShape you can just make use of this particular line of code and just terminate it using a semicolon and let's hit the run button now we are good to go we have our data that we have selected the discrete classification we have our shape file that we have already created over here now let's move forward and just clip our data to our shape file so i'll create a variable image and i'll just pass my data into it we have data now i will use the function dot clip and i'll just pass my shape file to it we have shape that's it terminate the line using the semicolon and we are good to go let's hit the run button so we have successfully created an image now it's time to paste all the data that we have created into our map so that we can have a beautiful visual view but before that let's restrict our data so i'll just pass my year that we need to select into our data so i'll just pass let's say 2019 the most recent data that we can have so into your data section you have to pass it on the year of the data that you require in order to generate the image so i'll just again just hit a run button over here then we have already imported the shape file then we have clipped the data now it's time to put it on the map so i'll just pass, make a function map dot add layer and i'll add my image layer to it so i'll just pass image to it i'll terminate the line in the semicolon and i'll just write map here i'll hit the run button now we are good to go here we are so as you can see a nice land cover map has been generated so let's zoom a bit in order to get a better view so now we can clearly see the land cover classification over there we have a green a tint of yellow we have red we have blue a yellowish green dark green so we can see all of these land cover classification over here and this is if i zoom it out you can see the whole india has been covered in this land cover shape that's it so we have successfully created a shape file we have successfully imported the data and then we have clipped the data onto our shape file so if you want to know that which color represent what particular type of land cover let's jump back to our data set that we have the copernicus global land cover layers so let's go down to the band section and let's scroll it down there you can see the discrete classification color table here you can see the value of the color, the color and the description about the color. So we have uh, vegetation over here, permanent water bodies, then we have closed forests, then we have open forest, we have ocean seas. So you can see these type of classifications are generally very helpful for analysis. We are good to go now. Thank you.